If you look at the world that we live in, you realize it's really incredible. I mean, look at all the arts, the sciences, the inventions, the ideas. It is endless. And the more that we look inward, the more we find. It's called being curious. And at this time, right now, you have access to more information right at your fingertips than any time in history. So come hunt and gather some collective knowledge as we embark on an endless journey in search of perspective, adding it to our big picture along the way. All you need is an open mind. You got it? Good. Because there is no time to waste when you are watching The Millennium Show. Last weekend in Oxford here, um, we had what was called the Tough Mudders come through. And uh, they came through, they set up um, in one of our uh, our uh, gravel pits here in town. And a lot of the locals, you know, came and they, they paid and they participated in the obstacle course. Um, and then there's also some professional athletes that came and competed too. And a lot of people spectated on that. Um, basically what the Tough Mudders is, is it's, uh, it's an obstacle course that is basically like an extreme sport. Um, and there's, you know, it obviously involves mud and water and, and a lot of, a lot of like climbing and a lot of going down and crawling and stuff like that. Um, so it's really, really cool. I think it's, it's a lot of the stuff that we're bringing to the show. Uh, it encapsulates a lot of those things with pushing what you think is your physical limitations, um, being in shape. Um, and just kind of getting out of your comfort zone and trying something cool, you know, being attached to this thing that we, we think is comfort. Um, if we get past that, it opens a lot of doors for us. So I, I really, I really think the Tough Mudders was, was, would be a great thing for us to bring the show to. And unfortunately I was not in town over the weekend to go to it, but however, I did get somebody to go out there and to uh, get some footage and to show you guys what it was all about. So check it out. This is the Tough Mudders. I pushed the 330 is just because uh, uh, the other guy that comes with me is gonna get here around four, and then like people might it's just a hot one. I don't know. How many people are there? Close to 20 sometimes. Just 20 jugglers come? Uh, it... Last weekend was probably our biggest like actual juggling weekend. You got your stuff? Oh yeah. It's good to see it.
what? And I, I actually wrote an article for a magazine startup about lunar vacations. I would much rather go to the moon than yeah. Mars. There's, the, I mean, just about everything that Mars has, the moon has plus more. I, uh, granted, the volcano on Mars, the, the largest one, it's the largest one in the solar system, is so big if you were on it, you wouldn't even know you were on it. Because it's so big that the, the slope is so shallow you don't even know you're there. But I'm, I'm curious, like, if, okay, we go to Mars and they, they want to terraform it and whatever, start making carbon factories, yeah. it would be easier to do that to the moon. No, the moon's, moon's you, you, you're starting from scratch with the moon. Completely scratch. Uh, okay. The moon's much smaller than even Mars is, right. so you have a hard time with it holding an atmosphere. It doesn't have the gravity to, to really hold, hold an hold atmosphere. Okay. No. That's what I was curious uh, about. you got just nothing to start with. Uh, Mars, its atmosphere is a hundredth that of ours, but it's still something. Yeah. It's still enough to slow spacecraft down, you still need a parachute, all that kind of stuff, whereas the moon, you could orbit the moon a mile above the surface. Right. The Earth from the moon is probably the most stunning thing I can right. think of seeing. Yeah. It's four times the size of a full moon from Earth. It's brighter than a full moon. Uh, there's a thing in astronomy called albedo. It's the natural uh, reflectivity of an object. I think the albedo of the moon is around 11%. The Earth is like 40. Yeah. So I venture to guess that a full Earth from the moon would be so bright you could almost not look at it. I mean, yeah. it would be so bright that you'd be like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. You'd put Earth glasses on to look at it. It, yeah, it, it, I mean, the largest spacecraft we've ever built is a seven-passenger space shuttle. He was also saying that, like, when he created SpaceX, he went and looked at the rockets um, that the Soviets had. Yeah. Since like the '60s, rocket science hasn't really went anywhere. No, it really hasn't. So I mean, he's, there's he's, it, it's it hasn't made great strides. The thing of how big that sucker would be. There's right. the thing called rocket problem, or it's called the fuel problem. He wants to have a rocket that is powered by the sun. I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about it either. Yeah. If a space elevator is possible. So it only works at the equator, but basically you, uh, so we have a thing called geostationary satellites. Yeah. Uh, they orbit the Earth the same speed that the Earth is spinning. Say there's one right above us, it's going to always be right above us. It can't be right above us because we're not at the equator. So the idea is, what if I hooked a cable from the ground to that satellite? What would happen? To conceptualize the idea of a space elevator, you anchor something to the Earth, you anchor something out in space, and now I can climb up this rope into space. But there's so many arguments about whether the physics is actually, if it's possible or not. And you're also talking about a cable that could wrap around the Earth like five times. Right. I mean, it's just, or, well, it'll be about two times. Humans have never built anything at that kind of scale. Yeah. You know? I don't care who you are, where you live, if you're six years old, you would recognize this painting. It's the Mona Lisa. It, it was painted by one of the most incredible human beings to walk this earth, Mr. Leonardo da Vinci. Now, what I want to point out about this man in particular is not necessarily his paintings that have become landmarks in human history, but what it was about him that made him great. See, da Vinci wasn't only a painter and a sculptor like everyone knows him as. He also showed interest in inventions, architecture, science, music, mathematics, 
engineering, literature, anatomy, botany, writing, history, photography, the list is endless. It absolutely blows your mind just how spread out this one man was, and still he had the time to be one of the greatest painters ever. On the side of that, he has been known to be called the father of paleontology, ichnology, and architecture. And he is even sometimes credited with the invention of the parachute, helicopter, and the tank. Now, I know what you're thinking. Did this guy sleep? Did this guy eat? Did he socialize with other people? I know I'm thinking the same thing. But whatever the case may be, I think there is certainly something to be said about this way that he looked at the world. And I think it might have a direct correlation with his work's success overall. You see, most of us tend to specialize, that is, in one particular field, because that is what we want to be successful at, whether it be some field of science, business, or an art form. A lot of us put all of our time and energy into that particular area, because that's our passion. But the problem is the perspective it leaves us with. The picture we then have of the world. It's very narrow. We might now be experts in one thing, but what good is that if we have no contrast, no pull on our push? It's extremely unbalanced. Now what da Vinci had was an ultimate big picture. And it didn't hurt that he tended to thrive in most areas. However, his view of the world was interconnecting constantly, and this may be what separated him from many other gifted artists of his time. So, make sure you do drive yourself to dive into those areas that you might think don't concern you and your goals and interests. Build up your big picture and, and you can create your own vision that's more solid and rooted in this incredible place that we're all sharing. Do it. I guarantee you will look at your canvas in a new way. And the more ways you find, the better chance you will have at painting a masterpiece. about uh, 6 30 in the morning I'm in Clawson I'm headed to uh, actually my grandpa's house which this guy is, is really interesting man he's really really cool I'm going to do his morning routine he does this every single morning uh, before before he does anything else he gets this routine in it's really cool I just wanted to incorporate it in and, and bring it to the show because I think it, it has a lot to say about just a healthy example of a lifestyle. It's really progressive what he does, you know, and uh, so you'll see how it is. So you see, I'm gonna do it with him, and uh, we'll uh, we'll check it out. Hey, hey, you're up. Yeah, it's ready for you, hey. <laughs> Why do you do this to yourself, man? <laughs> I've been up for a long time. What time is it? It is, I think, like 6:30. He you want has coffee. No, I'm all right. I uh, I went to the gym already. Oh, did you? Yeah, it worked out. Wow. Yeah, man. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, I got a book here. I'm not tell you. She really hits the big picture. Yeah. She connects everything. This is ultimate big picture. Yeah, politics. Really, really. It's terrific. Yeah. It's a pretty heavy read. You know, there's a lot Sorry. to it. The basic is how climate change is changing everything, and if we don't do something, Damn yeah. quick. Yeah. We're not going to be able to. Right. Well, I mean, you're talking a decade, 10 years. We'll be over the 2% carbon yeah. content in the atmosphere. The family's got to read it. We're in the day of extremes. For sure. Climate's yes. extreme, too. Yeah, it's going to get worse, too. The things about globalization, you know, they push that shit in this trade agreements and everything. There is no restrictions on cargo ships emissions yeah one cargo ship is emissions from the boilers yeah their diesel diesel powered oil yeah is more than something like 10,000 cars and there's no restrictions on it and they're around the world there's more and more and more of them because it's globalization everything's yeah. made with the labor's cheap and they can they could boat it over to the rich people and sell the shit to them cheaper that way, and the right. corporations get richer. That's yeah. just a, it's an endless, yeah. endless cycle. The jets too, because we know that you can see the, you can see the uh, contrails yeah. in here all the time, and that changes too. Yeah. And it goes on and on and on. Yeah, the biggest contributors are power generation, the wind power and the solar. Yeah, and they're 
quick to happen. They can put them up and quick to fix. It's diverse and it can not a big investment. It, it, it just makes sense. There's no subsidies like the big power companies get subsidized when they're building these power plants. And if they go all nuclear, there'll be so much waste. It'll be more of a problem because what the hell are you going to do with it? You can't dump it in the ocean. And you can't dig a hole and bury it in the ground. Keep on digging holes around because the oil company's going to be shooting. To credit, it don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. It just, and it's, it takes over 10 years to build a nuclear power plant. They just got to change the world with this. A lot of times it's cool when you start, but then you get it on there. Yeah, Halfway yeah. Halfway through the workout, you're sweating. Man. Right. <laughs> Did you, is this where you, when you were coaching track, is this where you guys trained? You take the team there? Not every day, but yes. Yeah? Yeah. This is where you had them grab a log and run up the hill. Yeah. yeah. The logs are still there. I'll show you. There's all different sides of logs, too. I yeah. used to give the real big ones to the, to the big guys. To the big guys. There you go. Take well. them off. I'd take you know, one of the girls I knew was very strong anyway. I'd give her a stick. Oh, and really? The guys would be like, ah, oh, come she gets a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we walk, or you walk the trail and you stop at your stations and you do your exercises? Yeah. And when I come back home, I got the dumbbells. Yeah. I do 20 minutes with the dumbbells. There you go. Oh, you do that every day? Yeah. Oh, sweet. We're doing like 200 crunches, though. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. 200 crunches. Yeah, but I didn't just jump into 200. Right, you know? right. You're probably eating really, really clean, too. Yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. that's a lot of it, too. This Makes kind of gets your blood moving and gets you warmed up. There's like seven. You hit seven sets. Right. Of those. Seven sets of the push-ups and the dips. Oh. And then the, the pull-ups, three sets, and a fourth one where it's on an incline. Okay. So... That's my basic exercises now, that. How many chin-ups are you doing? In sets, I can do like three sets of 15. Do you take an off day ever, like in the week? Do you have an off day? I only miss Christmas. I mean, do you feel different on Christmas? Like you're like, I should be working out. Yeah, you feel like guilty. I really, uh, I don't miss. Sometimes like if it was pouring out rain, I might wait and do it later in the day. You literally never miss a day. I don't know. I fit it in sometimes. And I say if I'm on vacation, I try to do something similar, you know. Right. Like I can do the exercises anywhere. I don't know how you do that on your knuckles. Gives my hand. Right. My arthritis to my wrist. You got calluses pretty, built up on? Yeah, you do. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's like I had when I was doing karate in the arm. You had to toughen up your knuckles. You ever hit the punching bag downstairs? Occasionally, but. It's surprisingly tiring. You get, you get beaten pretty heavy when you're doing it. Pretty good view, eh? Yeah. And over here, that little stream. There's a nice trail on either side of it. Quite a few different birds and stuff. Trees and shrubs tuck to each other with their roots at a frequency we can't even measure. It's like sonar. It's got real big waves, you know? Trees interact with each other through the roots. Their cycles are much longer than sonar, even. Yeah. So we don't have anything to measure it with. You learn how much really we don't know. I usually go back and then do dumbbells. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Well, thanks for letting me do this. Hey, that's no problem. That was make, fun. Make me a hero, man. <laughs> Thank you, <a> hero. <laughs> All right.
Well, unfortunately, we're out of time for this episode, uh, but we had a lot of fun uh, filming it, you know, with all the diverse uh, subjects that we covered, from the unicycle to the workouts uh, to the astronomy talks. You know, it, it was great. Hopefully, it, it inspired you in some way, shape, or form. For any more on the Unicycle Cowboy, go to unicyclecowboy.com or go to YouTube and type in Unicycle Cowboy. He is the only Unicycle Cowboy there is. So check him out. Jeff's a great guy. I want to thank him again. So thanks again for watching, you guys. We'll see you on the next show.